In an earlier video, I explained how important support and resistance is, and I showed you the basic principles of using horizontal support, where we simply placed horizontal lines, and we were looking for bounces off areas of resistance, and bounces back up off areas of support. However, there are many more varieties and versions of support and resistance, and I will cover some more of those in this video. Before I do so, I just want to show you how to place these lines and how to make some minor adjustments in MetaTrader. All the tools are on the top row. And for example, if you wish to place a horizontal line like the one we have here, what you need to do is you go to the tool that you're looking for, left click, and then place your mouse over the area of the chart you wish to place the line. Left click once again, and there it appears. If you now double left click this line, you will notice at both ends, we now have a square box. And the significance of this is we can now move that line up and down. If you right click this line, let's say for example here, the number, because it's five digit platform, I always find this confusing. So instead of having 57452 on there, I want this line to be a 5740. What you do is you place your mouse over the line, you right click. Horizontal line properties appears in the box. And what you do now is if you go to parameters, you can type in and change this number. So you can change it to whatever you like. And I want it to read exactly 5740. Another thing you can do is you can type in here the reason for placing this line. And so for example, I have a terrible memory. I can't always remember what the lines are there for. So if I was to say this was resistance, Going back to September 2009 and 2008. Click OK. Now when I go up to this line, you will see when you place your mouse over it, it explains to you, those of us with a bad memory, why we've placed the line there. So that's how to add a horizontal line. Equally, if you want to add a diagonal line, you place over the trend line and same procedure once again. The tool we use when we are placing trend lines and looking for trend lines is the ability to zoom in and zoom out. And for example, if you click on this button here, you will see how the candlesticks now reduce in size. It just makes it easier sometimes when you're looking to place lines on things. So if you look at the chart here, when you've zoomed out, you're looking to place the line touching as many times as possible. That will allow you to make your decision a little easier. You can even go out all the way just to simple fine lines. And for example, if you were looking to place lines here for the current moves, you would be looking somewhere around here. And what you're looking with trend lines is you're looking for as many points of contact as possible. But I will cover that more in the rest of this video. The most conservative method to trade Forex is to trade with the trend. And simply what that means is as price is going up here on the British pound, clearly we are in an upwards trend. And all we are looking to do therefore is to buy. We are not interested in selling if we are trading solely with the trend. What we need to do now is to place the trend line To form a trend line, what you're looking for is a minimum two points of contact. So at this point, when price had only got to here, we would have placed our trend line. We are then looking for reasons and opportunities to buy. So as price came back down here, we would be looking to enter. And we usual standard practice is go 10 pips above a line if we're looking to buy, and 10 pips below if we're going to sell. And the reason is price doesn't always come down and hit the lines exactly. And it's the same thing if you are going for a whole number. If price, for example, here, we were looking for a buy at 5,400, on this occasion it worked to the pip, but often price will just miss the area. So a standard procedure is we would be looking to long at 5,410. The potential here is that we then could be hitting an upper trend line. Let's put one in place now. Once again, you are looking for multiple points of contact. This is what's known as a channel or tram tracks. And what's happening is price is coming down and bouncing off this bottom area and reversing back off the top. 
The distance between the top and the bottom of this channel is 220 pips. And therefore we are looking for big potential gains here. And the way that we play it, we place our stop below the recent low. So you have a very low risk for a potential very high reward. As I said earlier, this is the most conservative form of trading and the kind of trades that I do prefer. Having put the lines in place, what we're doing then is, is we're looking for price to pull back to the line, stop just below a recent low or below a whole number, and a number of other areas and reasons I will explain later. If you were to take the trade here, go just below the recent low here, so you place your stop below, and you're risking 25 pips for a potential 1 to 10 risk reward ratio. Price came back down here, wouldn't have taken you out, and eventually made the move 220 pips. Thank you very much for risking 25. You do not need many of those kind of trades in a year to be seriously profitable as a Forex trader. Now, a swing trader would be looking for reasons to short at this upper area. And as it's happened, as you can see here, it has happened on a number of occasions, just missed here. But if there were multiple reasons, then you could be valid in looking for a potential short. Notice what happens when price eventually breaks this area. Price has broken this lower trend line and broken out, and it's done exactly the same as it does with horizontal support and resistance. The very next candle has come up and touched it and price has moved away and it's happened again here. So this major trend line of support has now become an area of resistance. Once again, price came up to the area and moved away. Here's an example from the current Euro USD on a daily chart. Originally, the line would have been here. For example, if we go back, the original line would have been around here because you've got one, two, three areas of contact. Price did then break out and moved away from this area. So you need to be flexible. And the main thing about placing trend lines is what you're trying to do is place your lines where all the other traders in the world are likely to have their lines. So you're actually looking to follow the herd in this example. For here, price has moved away. Come back up, you would look for reasons to enter a short here, and here, and here, on in each occasion, they would have won. Once again, we can place a lower trend line on here, this is a bit messier, but you now have a channel in the area from the top to the bottom of the channel, 550 pips. Once more, you are looking to place your stop just above recent highs, so for example here, Therefore, you're risking 88 pips, but for a potential gain of 500 plus as the move makes its way down, then in this case, the channel is getting smaller, but we're still looking around 500 pips for a very tiny risk. This is the British pound against the Swissie. This is not a pair I usually trade, but earlier in the year, one of the members pointed this out to me. And this gave dozens of winning trades from daily charts. Once again, we have the lower support area in place. And you had the opportunities here to long here, 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 here. Finally, we get a loser down here. If we place the upper line, the overall potential gain of this channel was 300 and odd pips. Earlier in the move, the channel was a lot smaller. So what we were looking at here is price was simply bouncing off the upper area and coming back down. But even this limited move was 150 pips. Going back to the British pound, I have placed on this chart horizontal support and resistance. And what we look for at Mentor Pro is as many reasons as possible to take a trade. We will develop this theme later on in the course. But for example, here on the pound, we were in an upwards channel. We were looking for potential reasons to enter a trade when price came back down to the line. Now, we suddenly have two reasons. We have 154.00, which is support and resistance. It is a whole number. 
Whole numbers are important and you will see this throughout all of the charts. Often price will come up to a whole number and reject. And therefore here at 15400, an intersection of horizontal support and diagonal support gives me a number of reasons why I want to take this trade. Similarly, when price has moved to the upper area, we have an intersection of the upper trend line and horizontal resistance. So if you are a counter trend trader, that would be a low risk counter trend move. When I take counter trend trades, I half my risk. To summarize, I have shown you how we use horizontal support and resistance lines, how we use diagonal trend lines and how we create channels and how the intersection of both helps us to choose winning trades.